Based on true events, Sirf Ek Banda Kaafi Hai, written and directed by Apoorva Singh Karki, is a great courtroom drama starring Manoj Bajpayee in the lead role. As the film releases online on Z5, we thought this would be the perfect time to explain the ending of the film, discuss all the hidden details and give you an idea of the real-life references. But before that, a spoiler warning is in order if you haven't been able to watch the film yet, as we will be discussing essential plot points and character details from the movie. And if you are done watching it already, kindly follow us through the video. And yeah, while you're at it, please like the video and subscribe to our channel, it helps us a lot. Thank you, and let's move on to the basic plot of the film. The film starts with a teenage girl Noob coming to the police station to file an FIR against a filthy godman who attempted to sexually abuse her. The police are shocked as they will have to file the complaint according to Poxo. In order to protect children from sexual assault, sexual harassment and pornographic offences while preserving the child's best interests throughout the legal process, the Protection of Children from Sexual Offences Act 2012 was passed into a law. The act was implemented after the infamous case of Nirbhaya. Before filing the complaint, she was taken into a medical examination. Then we are introduced to the honest and God-fearing lawyer PC Solanki, a warrior of truth and honesty. The Baba is taken into custody despite the attempts of his lawyers to bail him out. The defending lawyer is trying to remove the poxo, and the public prosecutor turns out to be corrupt and is planning to sell out his clients for a lump sum amount of money. But fortunately, the father overhears the deal and with the help of the police, they appoint PC Solanki as their new lawyer and tells him the entire story. When the girl, who used to live in a hostel of a school in Bindwara funded by the godman, started having stomach pain, the warden sends the family to one of his ashrams, claiming that there are supernatural things at play. When the family arrived at his place, the godman summoned the girl into his room and tried to have his way with her. He blackmailed the girl by saying that he will have her family killed if she speaks about his heinous act in the future. But the brave girl decided to tell his family about it and since then, they are trying really hard to put the culprit behind bars. Unlike the previous lawyer, Solanki decides to fight the case to get justice for the teenage girl. He has a good relationship with his rivals, but when it comes to fighting for a case, Solanki is ruthless and only follows facts. Sharma, the opposing lawyer, claims that Poxo is invalid as the girl is not a minor by submitting allegedly false proof of her birth. But Solanki defends her case by presenting the matriculation document which in India is considered as the valid proof of DOB. Solanki is aware that he cannot lose a single hearing as the influential Baba if gets bail, it will be hard for him to get justice for Nu. Religious unrest is on the rise throughout the state and Solanki is up against Ram Chandwani, a renowned lawyer in the country, in another bail petition in the High Court. The film successfully differentiates the High Court and the District Court not only in terms of production design but how cases are fought differently. Solanki is a fan of the renowned lawyer and at first it seems that he is a bit hesitant to counter him. But as time passes, he gathers more courage and gets over his starstruck situation. This shows his growth of character in this small span of time and Bajpayee's brilliant performance complements it really well. His opponent asks about the legitimacy of the FIR but Solanki defends his client really well. Anyway, things start to change outside the court as witnesses suddenly start to get attacked and the Babaji's accomplices approach Sulanki to bribe him but he harshly rejects their advances. When the victim is asked to appear before the court, the defendant asks her some weird questions like her percentage drop to alter the direction of the case. However, Solanki has a laser focus on people who can be of use. But one after the other, the protester and the followers of the godman start killing or hurting the witnesses. And when Solanki was followed by some random goons, he calls the police and sends them off of his trail. But Solanki does not step down, instead he proves that Nu is indeed a minor and Poxo is still relevant in this case. When a witness gets killed in front of the court premises, the police assign Solanki an officer for his security. But he has to let go of his assistant as the one guard will not be able to safeguard both of their lives. When Nu is again summoned to the court, the opposing counsel asks her disturbing questions about the home decor of the room where she got molested, and Solanki is still able to protect his client from being defeated by the rampant question. Meanwhile, the victim's father is not getting any job to support the case, and Solanki is able to fend off another veteran lawyer by stating that his representation is invalid. 
While getting back from the court, Solanki daydreams about getting killed by one of the Baba's ghouls, which shows his current mental state and how difficult it is to stand with truth and justice. In the high court, the defense tried to bail the godman out by telling the judge that the Baba has trigeminal neuralgia, which is a severe condition in which the fifth cranial or trigeminal nerve, which supplies senses to the forehead, cheek and lower jaw, is prone to chronic pain conditions called trigeminal neuralgia or TN sometimes referred to as Tick Jolly. Tien is characterized by a recurrent brief episode of electric shock-like pain. He asks the court to grant him bail so that Baba can cure it by going to the US. However, the Ames report says otherwise and the Baba loses his battle for bail. But before he could defend his client's claim, Solanki learns that his son is missing, which agitates him, but he keeps on representing New in court. After coming back, he learns that his son went to get ice cream, which angers him and he hits the child, probably for the first time. Later that night, his mother consoles him and the next day he is present for the final hearing in the local court. Solanki's opposition highlights the fact that the institutions and the humanitarian initiatives the Baba runs will be closed down and it will be a huge loss for the country. But Solanki refuses to bow down and adds a story from the Ramayana, stating that despite being the greatest Shiva devotee, Shiva did not pardon Ravana after his death because the Rakshasa dressed up as a sadhu to kidnap Sita, which tarnished the image of sannyasis forever and the Baba is like that only. He exploits his devotees, especially women, to satisfy his lust and later he threatens them by saying that he will destroy their families. This statement resonates with the judge and he sends the Baba to prison to serve a life sentence. The victims are really happy with the outcome but to them the appropriate punishment would have been a death sentence. A 16-year-old girl who was a guest at Asharam Babu's ashram in the Manai village, neighborhood of Jodhpur, in August 2013 accused Asharam of sexually abusing her on the night of August 15 at his Manai ashram in Jodhpur under the pretense of purging her of demons. The girl's parents, who were followers of Asharam as well, reported the girl's sexual assault to the police in Delhi, and a case was eventually opened as a result. A severe response was demanded after the topic was examined in the Indian parliament. Asharam was charged by the Delhi police with several IPC offences under several non bailable provisions after failing to show up for questioning by August 31st. Eventually, on September 1, 2013, the Jodhpur police detained him at his ashram and flew him to Jodhpur where he was jailed. Asharam was accused of violating Section 342, 376, 506 and 509 of the IPC, Section 8 of the POCSO, Section 23 and 26 of the Juvenile Justice Act and several other statuses. After his arrest, several political parties and extremist groups came into his support and volunteered in violent protest. Asharam had denied the girl's claims and asserted his importance, which was later shown to be false. To support his assertion that he had carried out humanitarian deeds throughout the years, Asharam had produced to the court citation letters from former presidents Kia Narayanan and APJ Abdul Kalam, former Vice President Bhairo Singh Shekhawat and Congress leaders Digvijay Singh, Kamal Nath and Kapil Sibal. The citations were however dismissed by the court after it had sentenced him to life in prison for raping a young girl. He has subsequently been imprisoned and had 12 bail requests rejected. The victim's family claims they received threats from Asharam's supporters asking for the accusation against him to be dropped. He was found guilty of the rape accusations and sentenced to life in jail on April 25, 2018 by the Jodhpur Scheduled Caste and Scheduled Tribe Court. He was also ordered to pay a fine of 5 lakh rupees to the victims. 20 years in prison were given to two of his associates. He and the other co-accused then appealed to the Rajasthan High Court for a suspension of the punishment. One of the co-accused sentence was suspended by the court on September 29, 2018, while Asharam's request for a stay of execution was denied on September 23, 2019. Asharam's followers, who are convinced that he is the victim of the plot, continue to show complete devotion to him. The film is really a decent addition to Z5's mostly unimpressive library, but the film is not entirely perfect. The thrill of a courtroom drama is mostly missing, it is only Mr. Bajpayee's performance that keeps the boat from sinking. So if you want to see a legit good performance from the veteran actor of Indian cinema this week, you can give this film a watch. Hey hey hey, thank you for watching this video, do share your thoughts in the comment section about your experience of watching Sirvik Banda Kafi on Z5, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to get your weekly dose of cinema series. See you at the next one and for the timing we are signing off, Acha chalta hu and I'll be back.